On this episode, we refine the shots with massive improvements. I don't know if this is better. <laughs> we watch too much The Last of Us. And we finally see the true nature of our game. This is just some garbage. Hmm. Hi, this is Christian. This is LazyDevs Academy. This is the advanced Schmap tutorial. Hmm. <laughs> We are doing shots, 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 um, but different kinds of shots. Uh, we are doing shots uh, in a shrub, where shots are coming out of a spaceship a jet. And so far it's going well. We kind of like trying to replicate kind of like the feel, look and feel of a um, of the Donpachi, right? That's kind of like the thing that we're trying to do. Um, we have prepared some, um, some animations. I thought that was actually one of the doggy zone challenges to kind of like, we this, there's this bullet animation here and, and we want this bullet animation to be applied to the bullet. Right now, the, each of the bullets is just showing this sprite, this arrow sprite, which is good, but it's kind of like a very wide sprite and, and it looks a bit static. Um, definitely feeling more of a less strobing effect. There's definitely flickery, but it's easier to see the motion of the bullets now because they're really big and long. Um, but we, I think we can improve this feeling even, even more if we add the animation. So we want to add the animation. We want to add also the muzzle flash, which is so important. Whenever something appears right now, it just like feels like the bullets are appearing and they're kind of like appearing with the ship, like on top of the ship. We want that to feel more natural by making a muzzle flash that that, that, that so there's like an explanation, visual explanation for why the bullets appear and where they're coming out. Um, and then we're gonna see what else is happening. I will give you a spoiler. There's gonna be a super meaty doggy zone at the end of this episode. I'm gonna show you some crazy stuff for you to try out. But yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get this started. So we kind of have to, and this is kind of like why we're doing the prototype. We are kind of like slowly expanding this, this whole shots thing. And we kind of like realizing, okay, if we wanna add animations, we kind of have to expand this shot thing even more. What if each shot would remember its animation? That would maybe make sense, huh? Let's try that. So let's do something like Sunny shot and animation. And that's gonna be like a little array that we put inside the shot object. And the idea here is that we can just like do animation 32, 33, 34. 32, 33, 34. Uh, and I'm not sure if this will work, we're gonna see. Uh, so this, 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 and then back again, right? So it's kind of like, it looks like it's, it's turning around. Let's see how that works. So we're gonna go this, 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 and then back to 33. Um, yeah, so we don't need the S anymore. We do need the SH though, because that's the height of the of the sprite and then we're gonna so we're gonna replace the entire s with this now here where we have the right and shot which is not animated clearly inferior we can just make like one frame animation and that allows us to just like we always assume every shot is animated and that makes it you know backwards compatible with our previous shots we just have like a animation that consists of one frame um, so now when we're drawing the shots, we need to, instead of the S here, instead of taking the sprite of the shot from this S property, we just deleted that. Now that we have Sani, uh, shot Ani, um, and we're gonna have to calculate the SSPR. No, SSPR is wrong. Uh, sprite, sprite is also wrong. Shot SPR. Uh, we have to calculate this from the Sani, uh, S dot Sani. Uh, array. That's the array containing the individual frames that we want to cycle through. Um, we're gonna use the same effect and that's why we did the, the, where is it? Where is it? See, now it's getting a little bit complicated. Uh, it's, it's a draw function. Here, here we go. Uh, no, not here. There we go. <laughs> right, right above. So here we had uh, the same problem happening or the same uh, uh, we programmed the same for the flames behind us, the flames behind the ship. And we can just take this code and adapt it. Let's put it in here and, and let's let's figure out what, what's happening. So definitely we want to, okay, we, we take in the array and then there's a whole bunch of stuff inside the square brackets. 
We're doing a lot of math to figure out the frame we're gonna pick. And we're just gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it in here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Remove this, okay, good. Um, this code needs to be adjusted, however. This is not quite the correct code. Um, for one, I think we can uh, just divide it by three. Let's remove this, so it's just a module of four. The module of four happened because the flame array, the display animation has four entries. So that's why we're doing the module of four. Now, in this case, we want this animation, um, we want to have flexible size animations. Maybe animations, or we already have an animation that is one frame, and we have another animation that is four frames. So maybe this four should be a bit more flexible. We can just take uh, hashtag s dot, Sunny. So just like I'm gonna spread it out so you can see. So this is the code that calculates the index, the entry in the array that that we're gonna show in, on on this frame, and we're taking this t value a variable, this time, the, the current, the number of the current frame, which can be a very high number, and we're doing a modulo. Uh, uh, and we are doing a module against the number of frames we have. So then we no longer have just a number that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. We have a number that is um, cycling between zero and the num number of frames we have. It's actually never actually the number of frames we have. It's always just one less. And then we're adding one to it because in, in Lua, uh, arrays start with one. The first entry is one, not zero. So we have to add one, but that's okay because uh, again, um, modulo means that it's never actually gets to the number that you modulo against. So modulo four means the num the uh, the sequence never actually gets to four because when it gets to four, it resets down to zero. So by adding one, it evens out. It's exactly what we wanted. Okay, let's put it in there. And so we're getting the uh, number of the sprite we're drawing from that array and putting it in this variable, and we can drop this variable directly into the, the sprite function. And again, maybe later in the game, we don't need that local variable anymore. We can just drop it directly in here. But I'm gonna keep it around because maybe we're gonna mess around with it. I don't know if this is better. <laughs> I literally don't know. <laughs> let, me, let me stop the bullet. <laughs> stop the bullet! Um, let me set the, set the shot speed to zero, but the shot weight to like 300. So we're gonna get one bullet. Ooh. That's a very fast animation. Ooh, okay, maybe we can make uh, the animation a little bit slower. Is that something we can do? So we're gonna bring back the, the division again. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Where is it? There we go. So we're gonna do the uh, backslash division, which is also already a floor. We're gonna divide by two. Yeah, see, this is a this this looks better. I feel like now with the, with the bullet that stopped, I can see the animation happening. So now we can bring up the uh, shot speed again and shot weight. <laughs> I mean, that's not bad, uh, but. <laughs> Also, it stopped firing because we're not deleting the bullets when they're leaving at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, but I wanted to show you something. You can see how the bullets are, you can see that, the, especially when you shot, set the weight to one, when the bullets are really clearly visible, when you get like the, the wagon wheel effect where you, it feels like the bullets are not moving at all. Um, let me let me spread them apart even more. Let me set it to 14 so you can see. You see how the bullets are all synced up? They're all animated at the same time. And that makes sense. That's 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 just reasonable that they are synced up because they are um, um we're using the same function to animate the frame for each bullet. So all of the bullets arrive at the same numbers, like the all the bullets are are have the same frame. And I think that there is a we can add more movement to an entire shot by kind of like making each bullet have its own uh, uh, its own offset, animation offset. 
So something we can do here is something like, um, how about we're going to go, uh, we're going to call it ST, sprite timing. And we're going to set it to T. At the time that we are firing at, we remember kind of like the, the time at, at which we are firing at. And we're going to do this the same here, just so we don't get any errors. We don't need that technically for the right, uh, right hand shot, but we're going to add it here. And then, you know what? I gave I giving up. Let's let's do let's let's get this a little bit. Let's get this um, the array part of this entire equation. Let's get it inside the sprite statement, and that allows us to do our surgery on on, the, on this line, so we can at least see what's happening. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's cool. So let's just do like a, a open a parentheses when we're dividing. And I'm going to add s dot st. Just adding uh, the time at which we fired the bullet. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Not quite what I expected. Let us make it even slower. Something is very wrong. Oh, mm. what happens? Wait, wait. Did I did I make something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Is that is that is that a, is that a mistake, Rooney? I just did. Let's try this. Yeah. Okay. The animation is happening and it's pretty slow. That's good. That's what we wanted. And now we want to desync this animation. How do we do this? Let's do it maybe like this, t plus uh, s dot st divided by two. No, it's faster, the animation gets faster. What do we divide by four? Ah, okay. Six and a half hours later. You know what, this is kind of, mm, this is not working the way I wanted it to work. So let us like, that's something that happens, that's fine. Let us just try a slightly different approach. So um, what about, what if we, uh, each bullet tracks, you know, its current frame, and then we're just gonna, for each bullet, we're gonna advance that frame. Each bullet not only remembers the whole animation, but also which frame it's currently at. How about that? How about we have like something called SI, that's the index of the animation, and let's start animation at one, and then SI, one, okay. And then here, and with the right-in bullets, we have to always keep, keep in mind that the right-in bullets have to, uh, we have to carry them with us as legacy, you know. Um, we're gonna remove this ST, we're gonna use a different approach. We're gonna do just a different approach, it's fine, it's fine. And that's why we're doing the prototypes. The prototypes are, are, are allowed to fail, and we're gonna, it, it, this is kind of like an opportunity for us to, to kind of like see what the best solution here is. I'm not sure if this is gonna be the final solution, but we're gonna try this. So SE is the index of the frame uh, that we're animating. Okay, so this allows us to just like when we, do, when we draw the sprite, we're gonna just go S dot SE. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, we're gonna take the index one, we're starting at one, from that animation that the bullet's remembering. And this whole modular thing, be gone. Oh, something went wrong. What? Why you, why, why wrong? It's not wrong. You liar. Why you wrong? Ah, come on, well, <laughs> come on, missing. Otherwise, come on, missing. Okay, good. Okay, so now there's no animation playing anymore. That makes sense. There's no animation playing anymore because we are we're stuck at frame number one. We need to add now code that advances the frame. This is good because it allows it to control the speed more uh, a bit better. I think that might be also a more readable code. So when we're doing the shots, we're going to do something like s dot sy uh, plus equals one. And then we're going to go, not, not even doing modular, we're going to go if s dot uh, si floor s dot si is greater than s dot zani uh, the animation that we have we, when we're when the when we're advancing the animation so far that it actually goes um, beyond the number of any anim animations frames we have then 
s dot si equals one. And again, this is kind of like a more simple, more primitive approach, but more verbose, and that's why maybe better understood. And also we can kind of like, if something goes wrong, we know exactly what goes wrong. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to do a hashtag, Zani, uh, because we are trying to count how many entries uh, S Ani has. Okay. Something weird happens now, right? Why, why is that? Is that happening here? Why? Why don't we see an animation? Why do we see this frozen thing? Well, okay, it's, the animation is happening, uh, and I can show you that it's happening by slowing down the bullets again. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we're gonna set the shot speed to uh, zero and shot weight to you know, hundred. So yeah, the animation is happening. It was just like, again, this wagon wheel effect where we're always playing the same animation and always offset every frame. So it seemed like nothing was happening. <laughs> we can also see that this is a bit of a fast animation. I think let's, we can slow down this animation now. So let us just go down. This is something that we can, we can uh, do quite easily now. We can just go 0 0.5, just a slower advancement every frame. So now, Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> we also need to do a floor here. Uh, where, where is it? When we're drawing the, 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 um, the bullet, here we need to do a floor. And yeah, see, that that's feels like a good animation for me. So let us now bring back, bring back that crazy speed. This is a crazy speed. Uh, and let us make it now so that um, we are using this the animation of the of the bullet. We're, we're gonna try to use that as a way to break up this wagon wheel effect. I wanna get rid of the wagon wheel effect. I want the bullets to be incredibly fast and I wanna still be able to kind of like see some movement here. And we can use the animation to do that. In order to do that, what we're doing is we're gonna advance the, the we're gonna change, mess around with the starting frame of the animation for every bullet. So each bullet will have a different starting frame as an animation, and that will break up the um, that strobing effect, that, that wagon wheel effect, um, because we're not just repeating always the same animation sequence, but uh, the animation sequence for each bullet is gonna be different. So something we can do here is we can try to do like a T, <laughs> that T again, T module of four. Let's try that. Now we have insanely fast bullets, insanely fast bullets, but you can see movement here now. And that's kind of like a cool way to, to combat those two problems that we're dealing with. Uh, there's a, sometimes you saw an X and that's just because we are not using plus one, we should use a plus one here. Oops. Oops. Yeah. So you can see that the, the spacing of the injured bullets is still makes it kind of like difficult for us to, to read this as movement because they're always at the same position. But because the individual bullets are animating, uh, there is at least some movement happening and that kind of like enhances this idea that, okay, actually we're shooting just very fast. Okay, so, but this is like for super fast shots. I think 14 is too fast. We figured out seven was pr plenty fast. <laughs> Okay, now the spacing is too close, so let's bring down the spacing. And yeah, let's, we can now get the spacing a bit closer, yeah. Okay. Now we're barfing up those shots, and there's like pl plenty of variety in the shots because they're animating. I think uh, in my tests, I figured out that actually we might be able to get, get away with just like three animation frames, that's kind of fine. Um, that means we're doing a module of three. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that feels right to me. That feels right. Because otherwise there's a bit of a pulsing happening, but this is, looks more, yeah, this, this feels better to me. Again, I did a lot of tests with this. So now we're going like this, 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 and net, then not back to this, but just like this, 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 like just three animation frames. That felt good to me. Maybe seven was a bit too fast. Let's bring it down to six. Just trying around different things. Yeah, that's good. 
because again, our screen is not quite as tall, so maybe our shots can be a bit slower, it's fine. Something I would do is I would make the shots um, disappear at minus, and not at minus eight, but minus 16. So in the update function, here, minus 16. Yeah, but generally this, these are the things that we're kind of like trying to combat. Like first the strobing effect where it's like really hard on your eyes, lengthening the bullets, adding like more details, making the bullets, bullets larger helps with that. And we're trying to combat this wagon wheel effect where it feels like nothing's moving because <laughs> the bullets are moving so fast. And again, like adding animations, adding more details to the actual bullet um, break, helps breaking this up and helps making the, the stream feel like really nice and juicy now. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is good, this is good. This is, this is, mwah. Okay, now let us deal with something that we are talking about in the, in the doggy zone, which is the, the muzzle flash. And here is where I bring in some, I've been doing experiments myself. I tried a lot of muzzle flashes. Here's the muzzle flash that I came up with in the end. And as always, whenever I bring new assets, they're gonna be down in doobly-doo. This took a while to get right, but I think this is the one that I like. Plop. Big muzzle flash. 16 times 16 muzzle flash. Okay, we're not always using the entire extents of that, of that, anime, of that sprite, but yeah, it's a gigantic muzzle flash. Yeah, because gigantic bullet needs a gigantic muzzle flash. We need to scale everything accordingly. <laughs> okay, so let us let us try to do this. So we're gonna call we're gonna create a new um, array that will contain all our, our muzzle flashes, and we're gonna just dump the muzzle flashes in there. Then inside the muzzle inside the array, that muzzle flash will animate through all to the end, and when it's finished, it will just delete itself. So we're gonna call this muzz. Like so. Now, when we're firing the bullets, we're gonna use the same technique as when we're adding the shots to add something to the muzzle flash array. So we're gonna go add muzz, comma, curly bracket, curly bracket closed, closed. And then we are going to, so there's gonna be an X value for sure. There's gonna be a Y value. We are not going to use any speed values because the muzzle flashes are not moving. They're just attached to the, uh, the, the ship. Um, that's why we also don't need the, uh, the PX and PY in here. The, the X and Y are really just like offsets, like how, uh, you know, how, for, where is the muzzle flash compared to the sprite of the ship? because the muzzle flash will always travel with the ship. It would, would look odd if the muzzle flash was left behind when you move around, that would look odd. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna keep, just, let's keep, keep it at zero for now. We're gonna see what happens. Uh, we're definitely gonna need a muzzle flash animation. So we're just gonna copy the, maybe the system from the, from the, from the, um, uh, from the shots. We're just gonna reuse that, that same, it's a bit of an arcane system, but maybe we can rewrite it later on. And that's it, that's it. Oh yeah, the muzzle animation uh, is gonna say 35, 37, 39, 31. 35, 37, 39, 41. Okay. So this is the, the muzzle animation. And so we wanna start it at this frame, then at this frame, then this frame, this frame, right? Like we just wanna go, uh, we want it to go through the frames. Uh, and then when it's, uh, when it's supposed to be the fifth frame, then we want it to delete itself. And we're gonna do a second one. Uh, we're gonna set it to eight. Uh, actually, no, let's just add one muzzle flash. Let's just see what, how that even works. Um, mm, mm, so we have a do shots function. We're just gonna copy this one. And we're gonna call this do muzz. Uh, and then we're gonna go uh, 4M in all muzz. And here is, we're just gonna do the animation. Uh, the animation will be faster though. We're gonna have uh, one frame per frame, <laughs> um, not as slow as the bullet animation. Um, and yeah, and, and if, the f uh, if this, wait, oh, we call this S on here, that's okay. Um, that's, uh, 
m.si plus one, and then if m.si is greater than m.sani, then, then we're gonna delete ourselves. So we're gonna del uh, muz m. And that is it. Quite compact code. Now we need to add this to the update function. Like this. And then we're gonna draw the muzzle flashes. Now where are the muzzle flashes, I think they should be drawn ab above the shots, so behind the shots. And I feel like we have to later on move the ship above all of it. But let's just try to do this real quick here. So M all muzz, we're looping through all of the muzzles. We're drawing the uh, M S any floor M dot S I, that's good. And then here at the location, we have to rewrite this a little bit. We have to go px, so the, where the player ship is, plus whatever the offset of the, of the muzzle is, py plus m dot m dot my. Uh, the size is gonna be two. We're just assuming the muzzle is always two because that's my, the size of my muzzle is. If you want to experiment with your own muzzle flashes and maybe there are gonna be different sizes, then you would have to implement a system that we like we did with the with the bullets where you have can customize uh, here when you create the object you can customize the size of the muzzle. Uh, I'm just going to keep it at two for now. That's good. I think that's okay. Um, yeah, let's try that. I don't see anything. <laughs> what? What? That's not what. Why is not nothing happening? What what is what is what, what, oh because we, we added it to the to the Raiden function we need to add it to the uh, Dudenpachi function. Okay, we see the muzzle flash. There, there's the muzzle flash. It is it is coming from the engine. It is coming. It is at the wrong wrong position in the ship. So let's let's move it around a little bit. Um, Yeah, well, let's let's push it, position this a little bit. So let's go minus minus four, and then uh, y position is going to be like sixteen uh, minus sixteen. So we're moving it to the left and up. Okay, this is a little bit too far, but we're pretty well aligned with the with the shots. That's so good. So so let's go let's go a bit further down. So let's fourteen. No, nope, further down still. Yeah, 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 maybe even further down, uh, nine. No, nope, further down still, I think, eight. Okay, now we have the problem that the ship is in the way. So let us um, draw the ship on top of the bullets and up on top of the muzzle flashes. So this, all of this is the ship. We can delete this, but we're not gonna do the um, that was when we were testing the cobblestone ink, but we don't need that anymore, probably. Hopefully. And then let's put it this here. So let's. This is the ship. Now something that we see is now the bullets are uh, appearing too low, so they are kind of like you can see them strobing below the muzzle flash. So let us put the bullets a bit higher. So here at the Y position, we're just gonna go minus four on the shots. So the shots appear a bit higher. So it looks now even more. Uh, so minus five, let's try that. Yeah. Okay, this kind of feels good. Uh, let, me, let me add the second muzzle. So copying just this out and uh, uh, putting it in here. And just like the offset is really just like, I think eight pixels. So so just like four? Yeah, sure, past Christian, four. Four seems fine. But yeah, we need to address maybe the elephant in the room here, as you might have noticed. Uh, past Christian made a mistake here. This 45 is wrong. Uh, this is supposed to be the first frame of this animation, and the first frame of, of this animation is 35. So we should change this to 35. Uh, past Christian won't notice this all the way until the end of the episodes, but the file down in doobly-doo uh, will have the correct frame. 
Now the difference between the two animations is actually not that extreme. Uh, so that's why I passed Christian hasn't noticed this. And this also might give us a hint that there is maybe room to optimize here a little bit. But yeah, for now, let's just run with 35 as our first animation frame. Yeah, seems good. Now there is a bit of a, like the muzzle doesn't feel like, like if you keep this press, the muzzle feels like it's just like strobing. It doesn't feel like it's, it looks static and you don't really see an animation of the muzzle. And I think the problem is that we are shooting a little bit too frequent. So let's get the uh, shot frequency down a little bit. And now it feels more like the, the uh, sh um, muzzle animation is, is actually animating. And the reason was like we had too many muzzles on top of each other and we just like were alternating between two uh, frames. So it didn't really, you didn't see the animation. Now you see that uh, entire, more of the animation play out. Now you see three frames of the animation, so that's good. Yeah, this feels good. This feels proper. Um, but you see, if you look closely, and we have to, we have to, we're gonna have to deal with it a little bit. Do you see how we still have that wagon wheel effect? If you look closely, you can see that it's always like a, a certain distance from from the ship. You can always see the same frame happening again. So we have to maybe we have to maybe jump in one more time and try to remove that wagon wheel effect. This doesn't, this doesn't feel good. Let's see if we can address this with, um, with, this, S, uh, with, with this thing. So we're doing it uh, modulo three, that's okay. Uh, what if we divide it by two? And then do a modulo three? Uh, and do like a T like this. So, just to break up the synchronization. Yeah, now we don't have that. Oh, oh, it's difficult, it's difficult. You have to be like really careful and watch exactly what's happening. But yeah, no, it feels, it feels better now. One last thing, we don't have any sound effects. That's why you can't really judge the way something feels without having the right sound effects. And let's add a sound effect to this. And oh boy, this is one of those things where I will start like experimenting with the sound effects. Actually, luckily I have, I have a cheat, I have a cheat. I have previously, I have figured out the sound effect. Let me, let me look it up. Uh, I think I know how to do this. I think I know. Yeah, so sound effects. Um, so uh, my cheat, I am, I'm, I'm going off of a cheat here. So it was like, I'm combining like kind of different, first of all, yeah, the speed, the speed, is, the speed is good. Uh, and then we're adding like something like, we're combining two different, two different instruments is, 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 is the idea here. Something like this is I'm, I'm replicating a sound effect that I had previously. I, this is this is not real sound effect making. This is not how sound effecting sound making looks like. You know what sound my sound effect making looks like. It's nothing like this. It's it's a it's a mad torture. Something like this. I think no, like this and like this. Yeah, that that sounds like a ma machine. Uh, uh, like a SFX, like a machine gun. Not sure if this is the final sound effect, but we just have some sound effects. So we, so we, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is getting somewhere. This is definitely, maybe it, can we make it darker? Oh, now I'm now playing with fire. No, 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 no. This is not good. Oh, but, but something we can do now is, where's the, can we add? Yeah, can we do some other? No, no, that's not good. That doesn't seem different. Ooh. Yeah. That, See the problem with this with a shooting sound effect. It's going to be something that you hear constantly because people are going to be keep the button pressed all the time. So you also don't want it to be like annoying. It's 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 a tough balance, and we're going to probably change the sound effect a lot. Uh, so it's maybe a bit of a deeper sound is actually better. So we can it's not as exhausting uh, and feels more like a you know like a grumbling than a, like a shrill like. Yeah, definitely the brrrr happening here. Yeah, this feels good. This feels good to me. This is a good, um, 
with an Apache thing. Uh, let us bring back, to, for completeness sake, let us bring the sound effect and the muzzle flash to um, to the uh, the uh, Raiden weapon. And it's kind of cumbersome that we have to switch using a a uh, variable. Yeah, compared to that, like, come on, <laughs> come on. What is this? This is just some garbage. <laughs> Oh man, did you see that? What is this? What is this? Um, but yeah, no, it's good to have these around to kind of have like contrast to see like how far we've come, right? Just let, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get those muzzle flashes. I'm just gonna dump them in here and then I'm gonna fine tune them. This looks cool. I like the flashing, but yeah. It, it feels like you're just like doing nothing. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, no, definitely prefer, pre definitely prefer that one. And this was really just, oh, I did, I did a mystic Rooney. Yeah, definitely prefer that one. That feels, that feels a lot better. That, feel, that feels really nice. We have a beautiful Dodonpachi like shot. There's still like the, the, the maybe options missing, but it feels fine. You just wanted to have one that is fine. We definitely did the banking. That's definitely um, there. We make the shooting feel nice for sure. We also normalize diagonals, which means this prototype is finished. Looking out our master plan, this is done. Uh, basic movement feels nice. Normalized diagonals feels nice. Shooting feels nice. We have a basic uh, shmup happening. Now we are going to move on to, as I promised, a juicy, juicy doggy zone. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, indeed, the doggy zone. So I, I've been messing around with this and it's, this has been cheating. I have to admit, this was cheating. I knew exactly what I was replicating. I was referencing some values that I wrote down. This was not nearly as much, much experimentation as I did to arrive at this result. This was a bit of a, I did a bit of a theater. <laughs> no, still, I still had some problems as you can, as you saw. This is a complicated thing. So something I want you to do is actually do your own uh, experiments investigation. We have created two weapons. I want you to create a new weapon. I want you to start from scratch, see maybe some, uh, look at some shmups, see some, maybe some other types of bullets, maybe other types of things, and try to replicate them. And I'm gonna show you so now some of the experiments I did that I'm not gonna replicate in right now, maybe later on, um, to kind of like give you an idea of what kind of shots you can maybe create. Okay, so this is actually the prototype I did like two years ago where I did like these kinds of experiments. So as you can see, there is my right weapon, which is, which is fiercer. It is a lot fiercer, don't get me wrong, but it has also a different bullet, like muzzle flash. It's a, it's a, it's a smaller muzzle flash because I felt it, it was more uh, in tune with, you know, the, the small bullets. But also I did more experiments. I actually also even had a switcher, weapon switcher here in the menu. You can do that. Um, you don't have to do this. You can also do it on a button. You could use the second button to switch between different weapons. Um, but yeah, I also did this. I did a spread shot. That's something you can try in the doggy zone. Try to do the spread shot, replicate the spread shot effect. It's not hard. We can, you, it's, yeah, you can pull it off. We have all of the elements to pull off this, this spread shot uh, in our prototype. Okay, so we also, I, I tried to like replicate Dot and Pachi like from memory, like what it felt from memory. And so I arrived with this, but like, I was like, no, this is, this is not what Don Pashi feels like. This is, so I had to actually, you know, record some footage, zoom in and look in, in a, in a movie editing program. That's how I arrived at the thing that we saw that we just replicated in our thing. Right. And again, I was uh, struggling with the same two effects that I was talking about, the strobing effect that you didn't, that it was just like difficult to want to, to watch. It hurt your eyes and the wagon wheel effect where you actually didn't see any movement because their bullets were traveling so fast. These two things I tried to uh, combat using the techniques I demonstrated to you. So this was a realistic, <laughs> realistic approach. This is actually what I went through, but I did some more. I did options. 
try some options, make the options shoot their own bullets. And you can see the options are also lagging behind my ship. It's just like the, the, the middle shot, the shot of the ship is just the same as Zoran Pachi, but I also just added like little ships that are following my ships in their own shooting their own shots. Okay. And then, this is the most difficult one. This is the most difficult one because you have the options circling around the ship, so sometimes above, sometimes below. That took a while. And I'm not going to do this in the tutorial right now. Maybe later we're going to decide to have options, then we can go back and then we can try it out. But this is not something that we need to do at this point. This is not something that stops us from progressing. As I'm concerned, this uh, prototype is finished. But again, you should do your own experiments. You should try out your own shots, especially if you want to uh, replicate your own mock-up. If you create your own mock-up and you want to make it come to life, then probably your ship looks different, probably you have a different shot, and then you have to go through this process yourself and experiment and see what kind of shot looks nice. Yeah, and something that uh, past Christian has not shown you, which a future Christian will gladly do, is also uh, just check out how much of the sprite sheet I used up for all those experiments, different bullet shapes, diagonal bullets, all those experiments for muzzle flashes. I did a lot of experiments with muzzle flashes. Even I did some experiments with like beam attacks and impact impact sprites and like big bullets and everything and you know lots of lots of cool things even enemies to kind of like see how the enemies interact with the shots so yeah i've used up this almost the entire sprite sheets for all those experiments uh, be prepared to spend some time in here and just have a ball so i want you to create your own experiments and please 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 post gifs in a in a uh, discord i would love to see what kind of wonderful shots you come up with and yes, this is the end of this episode. And as always, I will give a big thank you to all the people who are supporting this show on coffee. And you also can support the show on coffee. In fact, if you support the show on coffee, you get to see the next episode straight away because that's something that that's like a little perk that all of the coffee supporters are getting. They are able to access the episodes earlier. So check it out at coffee.com slash lazy devs. So the next step is we are gonna move on to my favorite topic, explosions. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.